Hi, DLNS. Once again, it's a great time, and I'm here thanking you all for watching my videos. My subscribers, yes, great thanks and a big ups to you all. Uh, it's a pleasure. I'm here again, and uh, I want to go into the part two of what we treated last time in my last video. If this is your first time you are watching me, scroll down, get to the comment section, uh, show your reaction over there because you are. Um, I want to know what you have on your mind, the questions, what you feel about the video, the lessons that you have, then I can go ahead and make more videos just for you. All right. If you have not subscribed yet, scroll down, you see the subscription button, just click on it and the bell as well. Anytime there is a new video, you get that lesson so you can share with other people over there. All right. So let's look at what we have uh, for today. But you remember we did a video on rivers okay a video on rivers that was the last uh, recent video and we spoke about the parts of a river now this time around we are going into something very special has to do it has to do with rivers and this time is how the river flows and the course of a river so look at the course or the courses of a river as the path on which the river flows and how it flows then we we'll look at special some key features of it then we move to the end of that lesson so it's going to be a great interesting time and make sure you have your pens your papers your jotters as well and make complete notes or summary notes if you have questions why not send them by uh, posting in the comment section or box and then we'll address them for you good all right so let's get to the board and have what we call the courses of a river Okay, so here we are. I'm here to show you how a river flows, the course of the river. Here we are going to talk about three courses of a river. There are three major courses of a river. These areas um, have different features and we are going to look at them. Now, there is where the river flows from, which is called the source. In my last video, I actually explained what the source of a river is, the, where the river originates from, and mostly it's on a highland. It has its pressure coming from there um, in a very fast and um, very strong manner. Now let's go to the what I've sketched on the board. I had this same diagram when I was explaining the part of a river. So it's the same thing we see over here. We have the highland and then we have the top of the highland, okay, where the source is. Then when you come down, you have the river flowing on the surface of the highland. Okay, so here on um, this stage, that's at the top there, we are actually going to talk about three major stages because we are discussing three courses of um, a river. All right, so on this, at this stage, the top here on the highland, the water moves very fast. Okay, so there is a huge pressure over here because of the slope on the mountain there. So we call this stage the youthful stage, the youthful stage, because at that point, the river is, or the water flowing from there is very active. It's very active. So that's the youthful stage. And that's the, where the source is. That's where the source is. So we label this. As a youthful stage. It's at the up there or top there. So we call it. That course becomes the upper course of the river. the upper course of a river or of the river so we've seen the youthful state and the upper course due to the pressure and the sharp slope here the water moves very fast i've indicated that and it forms features like rapids so rapids actually move very fast so you know if it hits a point like this and then it flows down the mountain is not having a uniform uh, surface which is smooth okay to we'll have other rocks uh, showing up and other rocks pushing the, the water to move faster. So when it gets to it gets a sharp slope, it will flow down easily, okay, or pour down very, very fast. Then it gets to a point here where you see the rushing over there. That happens usually when you look at how waterfall flows on top of the mountain. So that's where we find a lot of rapids forming in that area. Also, we have that rushing into the valleys where the lowlands in between the highlands okay forming the space over there called a canyon or a gorge so very narrow space 
and the gorge uh, becomes a space and the water flows through very fast to other places before it gets to other parts of the lowland or the plain. So we know for the fact that because of that channel and that narrow movement or channel or path created in the gorge, it is very suitable for the construction of dams. It's very suitable. That's for the gorge. Okay. When it gets to the lowland or the plain, then it reaches the middle. So the, in between here, we have the middle. So that part becomes the what? The middle course. The middle course. From the upper course, we move to the this way. Where this area, at this stage, we call it the maturity stage. The maturity stage. So this stage becomes a maturity stage and the course is the the middle course of the river this is the middle course of the river and i think that is also very clear at this maturity stage it gets to the lowland and because the pressure where it gets its source from is the highland the pressure is still there but not as what is happening at the top here because of the slope here here we have um, a plain land so it moves on it but you still see it moving very fast but not as fast as on the surface of the mountain so you can have some pace here but when it gets to a point where it carries a lot of load a lot of impurities branches of trees may fall in it that is the river um, you can have mud uh, pushing it along and then you can also have stones or pebbles all these things uh, flow as the river moves and this can slow it down at a point walls or blocks or places that are high in terms of the landfall could also block the path of the river and the, 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 yes the path of the river and it could divert to other areas when it gets to that stage the movement slows down the pace slows down okay so we call that stage the old age stage so it has reached its old age to depict the movement of an old person okay an old person so here it is very active so we call it the youthful stage at this place it is um, a bit active okay but not as active at this place so it has reached the maturity stage where it's still flowing at a certain pace then when it gets to this place, the pace slows down. That is the flow of the river. And that leads to the what? The old age stage. So we call it the old age stage. So I'm going to put it here on this side. And that course will be referred to as the lower course of the river. So this is the lower course of a river. At this stage, some features like delta, delta can have the delta wetlands spreading because the streams are now separating, the river is now separating itself. You can have these wetlands wet forming um, at different places and that we can have the delta. We can also have what we call the levee where there is a block that actually obstructs or uh, 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 hinders the movement of the river and then it causes it to flow to a place where we actually don't want it to go so that is the the, the levee also then we can also have the osgo lake the osgo lake so i always tell my student that when a part of a major river is separated that part can be cut off because the mud can block the main channel so if it gets disconnected from the main river it will gradually form what we call an Osbo Lake because the river moves in a very um, curvy manner and we call that a meander, a meander. So that is the movement of the river. So as it meanders on the plain or on a lowland, we are likely to have the impurities blocking the path. Then you have the river taking a U-shape. So if I, 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 I'll try and sketch it here. So you have something like as it moves like this straight, you could have this. Then, when it gets to a point, it will move in this manner. So this is a meander. So you have a meander, okay? Then gradually, this area, 
because it's flowing with pressure from the source. This area may cut off. Okay? Aha. Uh -huh. This part may cut off. Then you have it joining. Then the impurities here because this part is a bit close. So when it gets closer, the impurities, the mud and all those stones and the things also block this part. And then it can cut it off. When it cuts it off, this will become separated. So this area becomes separated from the main river. Then this will rejoin. So it will rejoin this. This will rejoin this. Okay? And then we will have something like this. The new one will become this. Then you have a lake that is separated from the main river. So the impurities will be here. Okay? Uh, or the load will be here. The load has separated this one from the main one. The main one will rejoin itself because the pressure is still there from the high land. So it will connect and flow to other places. Then we have this one um, um, taking this shape of a bow, a bow of an, an ox. Okay, so an ox bow leg. So a, a, an ox is a cattle, it's a form of animal. Yes, a cattle, a form of a cattle, it's an animal though. So when you see it bow, it has that U shape. Or we can also look at it as a bow, bow and arrow. You see the shape of it, that U like shape. So that U like shape will be formed, and because it has been isolated from the main river, it becomes a lake. So an isolated river is a lake. Yes. So this is cut off from the main one and remains the U shape. Gradually, this can dry up because it is no more connected to the main river. So if the temperature, if temperature is high in that particular area, you have it um, um, uh, drying up or becoming uh, something that has been uh, isolated forever. And maybe in the wet season, it could get filled again and it will begin to also flow to other places. So lakes can be formed also lakes can be formed out of the old age stage or the lower course of a river. These are the courses of a river. This youthful stage, upper course, maturity stage, middle course, old age stage, lower course. We've looked at the features. I think this is also very clear and it has been made simple for you. You should be able to sketch this diagram on your own because it's very very important in case you are describing in an exam or test or to someone on paper you should be able to sketch and make the person also understand then the features can also be explained clearly i think this video will help those in the final years who are about to write their final exams called a bc and then even all geography students will find something very relevant in this particular video and lesson i'll urge you to keep watching keep sharing my videos subscribe if you haven't but don't leave without sharing with other people out there somebody must know tell a friend and make sure you uh, show your reaction to this video by commenting in the comment section or box and let me know your mind how you feel and i can come and serve you with more interesting lessons and get it better and better and better